suspected assassination attempt could have been journalist Sanjeev Mehra. Do you have any doubt? Any old enemy? No, there is nothing like that. I didn't kill my son. I didn't kill my son. I didn't kill my son. You know, I always knew Sadhu Chipkar, but unfortunately, liver cirrhosis is going to give you away. You know, should I have been more to do with intoxication than with drinking? What about the violence you are committing on yourself by not taking medication? नमस्कार नीरज जी बहुत बहुत स्वागत है आपका इंद्रधनुष थिएटर की तरफ से शुक्रिया हमारी ये श्रृंखला है इंद्रधनुष के रंग जिसमें हम सिनेमा और थिएटर जगत के अलग अलग आर्टिस्ट को बुलाते हैं प्राइमरीली उनके एक्सपीरियंसेस उनके व्यूज उनसे कुछ टिप्स सुझाव लेने के लिए एंड आइडिया इज टू कीप दिएटर फोक्स मोटिवेटेड जहां तक भी हमारी रीच है जो लोग भी देख रहे हैं तो बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आज आप हमारे बीच आए वी आर रियली ऑनर्ड Thank you. Okay. Neeraj Ji, I was reading about you and I noticed one thing that you are a self-taught actor and you have discovered your own ways, devised your own techniques. While, you know, most of the things in public domain have been told about Stannis Levisky method, Chekhov method or Meisner technique. But I would like to know what is your opinion that is today prominent? What is your opinion about these techniques? Or you have something else to talk about, majorly about acting? The job of the actor is to represent human psychology, human feelings, human relationships, humanity at large. So when we talk about this, it is not easy. You require multiple tools and multiple studies to be able to interpret human mind, human beings. Because of which all techniques are important. And you must learn as many techniques as you can. The techniques that you were using and talking about are mostly European or Western. We also have the Natya Shastra in India. So these are all methodologies of acting training or theater training. And one as an actor must do as many as possible because you don't know where you will get a tool, an insight, a key, a note, some words, which will take you closer to the understanding of human beings. Which is why I always recommend that learn as much as you can. Don't restrict yourself to say, I'm a method actor and I will not learn anything else. I think that is a very incomplete way of growing as an actor. You might be a method actor, but it's also important for you to learn other techniques. Mm -hmm. I'm also very surprised sometimes that why don't method actors learn the Natya Shastra in India? Why is it only restricted to method acting or to Chekhovian uh, methodologies? And when you speak of, of course, Stella Adler, Lee Strasberg, these are all method acting teachers. You know, they've mm -hmm. taken up different departments of method acting and they teach that. But to learn everything is very, very crucial. If you just get stuck to one, then you're limiting yourself. Also, tools and techniques depends on the culture you belong to, which country you come from, what culture you belong to. Mm -hmm. Because that also has an effect. But that effect is not too big. Just like you are here, 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 you are here. आप मेथड एक्टिंग भी सीखिए आप चेकोवियन मेथडोलॉजी भी सीखिए सब सीखिए उसके बाद आप पर निर्भर है कि आप किस चीज के साथ काम करना चाहते हैं लेकिन किसी एक चीज के साथ काम करना भी अपने आप को सीमित करने के बराबर हो गया जितना आप सीख सकते हैं हो सकता है कि कई किरदारों के लिए या तो वो थिएटर में हो या फिल्मों में हो कभी कभी मुझे लगता है कि ठीक है मैंने जो कुछ भी सीखा है हल्का फुल्का नाट्य शास्त्र से कभी कभी आई फील की आई कैन ऑल्सो यूज अट ऑफ 
the method acting philosophy. I can also use a bit of some other philosophy and work, although I don't do that personally. Personally, as Neeraj Kabi, I do not follow any method. I have invented and created my own method over the years. So my grammar is my own. And I took this decision many, many years ago when I was doing many, many workshops with a lot of people who came from Mexico, from Los Angeles, from Australia, from all over the world. Or here Bombay came from Bombay. तो या तो ये ब्रिटिश काउंसिल में पढ़ाते थे वर्कशॉप देते थे या तो फ्रेंच इंस्टीट्यूट में तो मैं वहां जाकर एनरोल करते हुए मैं शायद ये एक हफ्ते या दो हफ्तों के वर्कशॉप्स हुआ करते थे एक्टिंग पर या थिएटर पर ये मैं उस वक्त अटेंड करता था बट सम हाउ आई फेल्ट इनकम्प्लीट वाइल लर्निंग दिस मे बी अटेंड लर्न द होल मेथड बट आई फेल्ट इनकम्प्लीट आई फेल्ट आई एम लुकिंग फॉर समथिंग एल्स व्हिच आई एम नॉट गेटिंग इन दीस वर्कशॉप्स एंड दैट इज हाउ द जर्नी बिगन of my own self discovery of what therefore acting is for me and how i should be doing my own work as a theater artist but i always recommend those who are not able to discover their own methodology um meri salah ye hai ki aap hamesha jitna seekh sakte hain seekhiye because it is not possible to interpret human mind by just learning one technique or one tool no one technique can tell you that this is the ultimate way to understand human psychology nobody can tell you that you have to learn multiple techniques multiple techniques absolutely and uh, thank you sir it's a very beautiful view human centric view to approach acting and uh, openness to learn pick up the best of the all sides of the world and then devising your own style or outlook is something i think which all actors should have actors are thinkers also actors are not just performers yeah. so yeah that is yes, that is yes. required okay uh, in fact I, in the book of स्टानिस्लावस्की एन एक्टर प्रिपेयर शुरुआत में अगर आप पन्नों को पलटे वहां पर उन्होंने खुद लिखा है दिस इज माई मेथड डू नॉट एप इट वो खुद कहते हैं कि ये मैंने अपना आप इन्वेंट किया आप इसकी नकल मत कीजिए अब अपना ढूंढिए वो खुद कहते हैं ये हबीब तनवीर साहब जब गए थे रॉयल अकेडमी ऑफ ड्रामेटिक आर्ट्स उन दिनों वो मेरे ख्याल से उन्हें तकलीफ भी हुई थी वहां एडमिशन लेना चूंकि वहां के जो फीस है तब भी और अब भी बहुत ही हाई उसे अफोर्ड करना बड़ा मुश्किल काम है और वो उस वक्त किसी तरह से वहां गए थे लेकिन अगर मेरा अंदाज सही है तो आई थिंक फर्स्ट ईयर या सेकेंड ईयर में ही ही लेफ्ट दैट रॉयल अकेडमी ऑफ ड्रामेटिक आर्ट्स ही लेफ्ट द इंस्टीट्यूट सेंग एंड वेंट टू द प्रिंसिपल एंड टोल्ड द प्रिंसिपल दैट दिस कोर्स इज रिडंडेंट for me i cannot use this technique in my country to dekhiye ye alag ek nazariya hai aur chhod chhad ke wo chatisgarh aa gaye aur wahan apna invent kiya apna technique ha yes uh mera agla question aapke you know ek bahut hi famous production se associated hai which is hamlet um i was reading that you did hamlet the shakespearean production um and you've also of course done lot of a lot of other productions also like uh, Uh, something for oscar wilde uh, as well and but this hamlet one was staged with kala ghoda uh, theater festival so now we have lot of theater uh, actors practitioners with us and they also want to create something which is uh, acceptable and uh, creates a magic at the national level uh, theater or national level festival what do you think what are the parameters we should keep in mind if we are aiming to take our show or our play to that level national level audience hamlet was a play that i had directed uh the play you just mentioned about oscar wilde i had acted in that play not directed and that was not my production hamlet was the production of my theater company and i had directed that play when we did that play we took up shakespeare that was i think my first play that i did or i think the second play i don't recall it very very early stages of my career uh, as a director and in the theater i took shakespeare up because i felt shakespeare resonated everywhere and that's a very common thing about shakespeare he resonates in every culture you okay. can pick him up and adapt him in any culture because he talks about humanity and the human psyche in a very very general way that you connect with him immediately now when we took that up the first thing that came into my mind was we are not english people so and this is a european play we are indians 
And even if I take actors from here, I will never be able to do justice with the English that the Americans speak or the Europeans speak. That's the time I decided I'll do it in both the languages. And I got Harivansh Rai Bachchan Saab's translation, fortunately. It's a very, very good quality translation. So I had Shakespeare and I had Harivansh Rai Bachchan Saab. <laughs> so I'd gotten the languages very, very tight with me and I was very happy. Next, I thought, I need to interpret this through an Indian eye. I'm not adapting it. I'm interpreting it. I'm seeing it from my point of view, from the point of view of how an Indian will look at a Raja, a Rani, a Prince. Mm -hmm. How will they look at it? And what is the semblance of all this? What are these emotions that connect with the Indian heart and the Indian psychology? That is where I started reading a lot. And I realized that in 1603, when Hamlet was written, at the same time, we were having Yakshagana down south, which was evolving. Mm -hmm. And Drupad, which is a classical form of singing, also, was also evolving in the courts of the kings at that time. So these were very significant forms, art forms, that were prevailing in 1603, when Shakespeare wrote Hamlet. In India, it was Drupad and Yakshagana. Hmm. That is where during my research, I felt I would use both this, both of these forms to interpret Shakespeare. Because Shakespeare is very complex. He might sound easy, but he's very complex in what he writes. And for one actor to be able to create or express those complexities, it becomes very difficult. This is where this whole concept came about. So when I directed this play, there are portions of Yakshagana artists who came from Udupi. We got them from Udupi and they are performing parallel scenes with my actors. That made it phenomenally amazing. Yeah. For example, there is a scene where um, Hamlet's famous dialogue, the soliloquy he speaks, to be or not to be. Ab jina hai ya marna hai, karna hai. This soliloquy, when I was performing, I had the Yakshagana dancer who was dressed like a god at the back and Hamlet was sitting in front. And I felt this is not the thought of one person. This is a universal thought to be or not to be. I wanted this not to be a thought of Hamlet, but to be a sermon. Dancer the, unko. And he is communicating this to Hamlet. And Hamlet says it to the audience. He does not think to himself. So the whole speech takes a new turn, a new philosophy. And it became like almost Krishna talking to Arjuna. So every time the speech is told, the Yakshagana dancer would whisper in the ears with the gestures. And then Hamlet would listen and say the speeches. Wow. So we could interpret it in such beautiful ways. And then we had Drupad coming in. Drupad would multi-layer the performance because the speech had certain sound patterns. There were certain feelings. There was a rhythm. There was a temperature. There was a wasan, a, a weight to that speech. And those qualities I found in Rag Bilawal in Drupad. So when the actors were performing that speech, my Drupad artists who came from uh, Indore, they would sing Bilawal. When they saw, sang Rag Bilawal, we did not make them sing as backdrop singers. They were part of the performance. Mm -hmm. So they didn't sing it fully. They would sing bits. They would lower down their voice, again raise it, again slow down, again pause, again put. So it was like three actors working at the same time. Hamlet, Yakshagana, Drupad. But beautiful, sir. That's a, that's not just a play. That's a journey. And I'm glad I could know about that yes, journey yes. from you. Uh, because it's not written also somewhere about so many, so much details which you shared with us. And I'm sure a lot of people uh, who will watch this interview will have takeaway. Art design, story, representation, characterization, uh, adapting it, not using much of logistics or backstage props. So, so much packaged all together. Thank you. Thank you so much. You... <laughs> Uh, shared all of that with us. Also, you know, we also had 
the training rehearsals were also very very intensive just the acting training mm. so much of discoveries happened at that time so many mm. we just went on and on and on and a lot of my workshop techniques that i teach today were actually based on those years where mm. i was inventing techniques of acting rehearsals all mm. of them were being invented because my actors were i had a fantastic team of actors who were willing to do anything i was saying and we would start rehearsals early morning never in the evenings normally all rehearsals happen in the evenings but we would start at 7 o'clock in the morning 7 sharp mm. and all actors would travel by train from wherever they were coming very very far literally some would take an hour and a half to come they would rise at 4 a.m get ready leave the home at 4:30 catch the train by 5 and arrive here by 7 and this went on for one year they kept on doing it and yeah. we only had sunday breaks otherwise we kept on rehearsing that kind of commitment was there with all the actors and we were creating so much we were learning so much we experimented with everything even with rehearsals there was a moment i remember when it was rainy and we we were rehearsing inside the room it rained and we just went out we went out into the maidan and all the actors were spread out in the corners of the maidan big maidan they all had umbrellas <clears throat> i went over there and i took away all the umbrellas they were all getting wet and in that wetness and that rain we were performing scenes and the audience the actor had to reach out the voice to the other actor standing right at the end of the maidan and we wanted to see what was happening it was not just voice training in the rains it was also what is the sense you get with space mm-hmm. then that space when you bring it into the theater space you have added so much more of yourself that that space is no more the same mm-hmm. yeah. that is why we would work like this we were only rehearsing inside a small room that room didn't even have place for us to sit properly so we were just sitting close to each other and rehearsing the entire play for one year and then we would break it open and go into the maidan and rehearse so we were doing opposites rehearsing in small rooms and suddenly rehearsing big maidan never in the real space of the theater i so guess that gave us very magical uh, interpretations to the whole thing apne boundaries letters were written to yeah mera yeah, matlab hai many many things were done you changed the boundaries itself you you took them out of the confines because ab unke liye koi limit nahi hai they can even you know perform yeah. in a stadium they can even perform in a small room and everything within this Everywhere. domain and range is pretty much possible in fact we did one more exercise i will just end with this exercise we also took all the actors one day suddenly they came for rehearsals it was again raining and bombay was flooded but we had to maintain the discipline of the actor the actor arrives despite of rain thunder storm the actor will arrive that's the meaning of the act, word actor you cannot call yourself an actor if you don't have this commitment it was raining i remember trains were having a problem traveling in mumbai water had flooded in many many areas i told my actors in one and a half to two hours time i want you all at church gate church gate is very far from where i was rehearsing it takes about an hour and a half to us to reach there because we were we were at that time practicing from north bombay and i told them go into south bombay and reach there in two hours all of them left there were girls also there were ladies and there were men they all left i left after them like them i also took the train i also went like them we were all getting wet in those days those were early days of our lives we didn't have much money nothing so we were just about trying to scrape through everything we went and we were supposed to arrive at the blind and mute institute the helen keller institute of the mute and the blind we arrived over there we had taken a permission from them one day before that we are actors doing theater we would like to come and do a theater workshop with your people your students over there and the helen keller institute over there had said yes you are invited it was not in church gate it was somewhere between church gate and marine lines we went over there my actors did not know this i told them let's go we are going to an institute where people cannot see and they can't hear i want you to do this play for them now that was an enormous challenge for my actors 
we went straight over there we started first one hour went to just expressing and communicating with all the children over there children and adults so job of my actors was to tell the people about their characters that was the exercise given to them so they were speaking to people who can't hear who can't speak and who can't see such a difficult task was given to the actors and they found their way to express and we did two scenes of hamlet in front of the audience some of them could not see some of them could not hear some of them could not even speak nor hear nor see now these are exercises of the theater person this is how you find your ways to express to people at large your audience is not only the educated audience your audience is everybody everybody that's where your empathy grows that i'm not performing only for people who can listen to me i'm also performing for people who cannot listen to me who cannot see me that is where your heart grows as an actor that is the growth of the theater actor um i can only say one thing that people cite challenges that their dialogues are not strong enough sometimes people say ki my role was very short we all look for some reason to blame why the why didn't the performance come out well or maybe why our role is not meaty and yes aur ye sab sunne ke baad mujhe lagta hai ki expression and communication find its way if it is driven by your will power to strike a chord with the person in front of you we are human beings we have vibrations we have a, a, we we can communicate message you made them go into that uncharted territory and they did it um <laughs> that's a i think after hearing to this people will stop complaining i believe at least most of them should <laughs> that exercise can be of this level as well <laughs> okay uh, moving on so you have done lot of intense roles in critically acclaimed uh, movies and plays uh, i want to take out the example of uh, so first of all i would like to ask you do you have a favorite genre like i know uh, recently along with shifali shah uh there was a movie which came when yeah that was that was a romantic movie and we have seen you in talwar yeah. and and we have seen you in ship of theseus where you played a monk do you align with the philosophies like as different as this for example in ship of theseus uh, or how do you you know what is your favorite genre i would like to know you know i don't have any favorite genre i in fact want to work in all the genres and fortunately i have managed to work in a lot of the genres mm -hmm. uh so it's been romance it's been villain if you take the navarasas uh there is everything i've done the shantarasa in in uh, ship of theseus i've done bibhatsa i've done shringara i've done karuna in talwar which is tragedy uh uh so there are all of these that are there and i want to perform even more and more genres i have not really found anything my favorite because the moment i did even once again with shifali shah i suddenly realized that okay romance is my favorite now <laughs> then i did parulkar and i felt no i think the villain is my favorite genre <laughs> then before that i felt when i was doing ship of thieves i felt no this is my favorite genre the shantarasa which is which is something else altogether so i found that no it doesn't work like that for me every time i feel something is my favorite something else comes and i start to enjoy that and i start to create in that so there is no favorite that i have i like to enjoy all the genres and regarding the philosophy of work remains the same right from ship of theseus till today whatever mm -hmm. methodology i use <clears throat> the integrity the seriousness of what i'm doing is the same even if i'm performing which i have not done one genre i'm not uh, uh, um, uh, attempted as yet i think i have not got a, a role in that is comedy i've done a lot of comedy in my theater days acting but i've not got in a comic role as yet i did taj mahal 1989 on uh, netflix. netflix it's a web series that is not comic but it's slightly lighter it's slightly comic as well but not the slapstick comedy that's how far i've reached with comedy till now i'm still waiting for writers producers or directors to approach me with a real comic role in fact mai ye bhi puchna cha raha tha ki kyunki aapko humne bahut sare roles mein dekha hai generally you appear very serious on screen 
when you do your own you know theater rehearsals or shoots do you have fun or not aap hamesha bahut serious nazar aate hain no because you're seeing me as a character yeah so all yeah. the characters i perform is very very serious when i conduct workshops or when i teach participants i'm a very different person at that time <laughs> i teach children i work with uh, teenagers you cannot be serious and work with teenagers they will reject you down right <laughs> so i've been working with them for the last 19 years now 20 years i think mm-hmm. so if you if you last so long you can only last if you're fun loving if you're humorous mm-hmm. otherwise children will not accept you even mm-hmm. adults will not accept you as a teacher if you don't have a sense of humor and if you're not fun loving immediately that rejection will come from the participants you can do two workshops after that they will reject you so the sign of being there for such a long time is simply because you need to be extremely fun loving very humorous and very witty you have to my roles unfortunately or fortunately have been very serious all the roles that i've done so i really, i can't be fun but i do believe they uh, all the directors who are working with you they they notice the fun side of yours during the shoots and they think of the next one you know during the shoot during the shoot gorav i'm very quiet i'm actually in my van and i prepare a lot as if it's an exam every scene i do is like an exam i finish the scene i get back to my van and I'm there i have my notes and i begin to work immediately i never mix around too much with co actors or my director on set okay. i'm mostly inside the van very few times have i really come out where i feel that the atmosphere totally is too serious for a film like this it it has to lighten up because then people are also getting tired of it mm-hmm. then at that time sometimes i come out and then i'm with everybody and and yet i'm preparing yeah. no i think uh, somewhere we need to again remind ourselves that we are here to do acting which should look natural and we need to be honest to our roles so if we are not supposedly while it is always advisable to have lighter moments we cannot you know really make it a party venue because just because there is a congregation of people Uh, thank you sir we have we yeah. have definitely these points to take away for us especially a lot of young actors who are sometimes who are who are passionate but not serious so i think they will you know probably definitely take it uh, from your inputs thank you um, now i would take some audience questions and i would move to the first question which is from anuj agarwal hello sir my name is anuj and my question to you is you have been part of many crime thrillers but success of patar lok hit the roof has it changed the way you look at your roles in web series thank you it has not changed my uh perception of roles uh in ott because i think even before patal lok when sacred games came out that also hit the roof that was something that we had never expected sacred games was huge it was the first time we saw a um, a series of that caliber and the reach that it had Uh, to the international audience and the global audience um so it has not really changed my perception of roles towards ott but i yes definitely have been intrigued by this medium a lot more than films because the way it, the ott has responded or the audience of the ott has responded to the work that i've been doing that has given me a lot of encouragement mm-hmm. and i see that as a as a huge space to perform because after doing parulkar and then it is sanjeev mehra in patal lok and now avrod and the way it is being you know accepted by the audiences that gives a very positive um, outlook towards the work i now want to do uh, in the ott platform and i now want to try to take or to try to uh, you know um, uh, accept the kind of roles that i want to do yes that if you say yes it has affected me because then i will i i now want to take roles which are something different from what i've done in sacred games and sanjeev mehra in patal lok now because i know i have an audience there waiting to see totally new things even in avrod the kind of love i've uh, i've received from the audience has been so beautiful although avrod is not as big uh, as patal lok and sacred games as yet avrod is still running but a uh, beautiful uh, reception of the audience is so yes definitely now that thing has come that i i need to create things that they have never seen because i know there is an audience that will receive this 
Yeah. And by the way, on that note, we're also waiting for Patal Lok 2. A lot of people <laughs> will expect whenever that goes on the floor. Okay. Uh, next, yeah, next question is from Aritro Biswas. Hi, sir. Aritro here. Uh, Kaibar stories are very region specific. Hoti hai. And smaller theater groups might not have enough budget or resources to conduct a dialect or training session. So in that case, should we change the story or should we keep a language neutral approach? Bhasha ke baare mein maine aapse kaha jab maine Hamlet direct kiya tha. Us dauran I took a decision that I will make it English and Hindi uh, mm. because then the reach is there. But yes, you're right, uh, Oritro, that certain um, uh, stories belong to certain regions only but it's up to you actually for example uh, ratan thayam uh, from manipur he does theater which is only manipuri theater the stories are about his region only and he does that in manipuri even if he does a shakespeare like macbeth which he did he did that in manipuri he translated that so whatever he does he does it only in that language, not really fearing the audiences. That is why he's got an international audience. So theater is not again only about language. It is also a, a medium of visual. It's an audio visual medium. Mm -hmm. So language is not the prime thing in the theater. It's your performance. It's a level of belief. It's your music, it's your costumes, it's your scene blocking. It's everything put together that you're trying to say. That's where theater comes alive. It doesn't come alive only because of one actor. And even if you take a theater which does not have costumes or art direction and just has a plain blank space and an actor, then the actor's performance, his training, his talent, his integrity, his honesty is far more than just the language that he's speaking. So don't mm -hmm. take language as a barrier ever. And in the context try not of movies to do dialect or... training. And yeah, try not to do dialect training or language training because that does not help. Ultimately, that slight dishonesty will be seen and felt by the audience. Take a play and take actors who speak in a particular language, interpret that play, translate that play. Don't change the play. Take the play. Ratan Tham translates his play. There are so many plays he has done. He's translated that. Sanskrit plays. So many Sanskrit plays. Ritu Samaram. Ritu Samaram, he translated that into Manipur. Mm. So there are plays. But you can do all this. You don't have to change the play. You can translate it. But I always suggest do not train your actors to speak another language. There is a slight problem with that all the time. I've seen plays like this. Actors make a lot of effort to understand and to learn the language. But somewhere... You know, you feel that which is missing. You, you don't enjoy that yeah. from yeah. the actor. But imagine a Marathi actor trying to speak like Hathiram. <laughs> not possible. Very difficult. They can do it. I'm not saying no, it's not impossible. But I think it would be a very rare case. Very rare case of an actor, a Marathi or a Bengali actor or an Odia actor, you know, suddenly speaking in Haryanavi. And with total conviction, very rare. Hota, bahut rare. It, it must be some um, impossible talent <laughs> or phenomenal talent of that actor to be able to grasp it. You cannot. It's very difficult because language belongs to a culture. Yeah. You cannot just learn a language. You have to live in that culture to be able to express that language. Language is not spoken by the actor. It is expressed by the actor. There's a difference. Yeah. To express... You need to live in that culture. You can, otherwise, you can speak it. Speaking the kuch nahi. Agar aap ek saal riyaz kare, to aap Haryan bhi bol sakte, aap Bengali bhi bol sakte, aap Marathi bhi bol sakte. Lekin wo baat nahi hogi. Aap sirf bolenge, aap express nahi kar payenge. Because you have to come from that culture. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, moving on. Uh, agla question, uh, question uh, Vabab Chopra ka hai. Hi Neeraj sir, my name is Vaibhav and my question is to attain or develop a certain character, what acting technique or process do you follow? Is it classical acting or method acting or something of your own? Secondly, how is an actor can we upskill acting? Any advice or suggestions you have for the aspiring actors? Thank you. I have invented my own grammar over the years, many, many years of training. 
I still am inventing. I'm still working on my craft. Every single performance that I do, I still make notes. I still come back and I still try to work on it. Um, so I don't follow a, a methodology like that. My own personal technique, um, I can't really explain that in an interview because it's a long process that I go through when I create something. But if I were to make it very, very short then uh, or very brief, my technique involves immediately a physical or a physicality to the character. I first look for that. So when I'm doing a character of Gandhi or Maitrey from Ship of Theseus or Parulkar or a slightly senior uh, Dr. Yang Guang from Gyomkesh Bakshi, anybody, or a very um, uh, romantic uh, Amar from once again, the romantic film which I did, whichever part I do, I first figure out a physicality of that. So there is a physical intelligence mm -hmm. that the character must have. It's called physical intelligence, not body or not look. It's called physical intelligence, which means that I begin to prepare a kind of a routine of physical technique, training technique every morning for myself. This routine consists of yoga asanas, yoga breathing techniques, Kalari Pai 2 is a form from down south, it's a martial art. So from the Kalari Pai 2, I take certain stances. I take Chow dance, which is the dance form from East India, which is a mask dance form. And I take a bit of Kathakali. These are certain formats I've trained myself in very, very briefly uh, it, many years ago. And I take certain permutation combination of all of these and I put them together to make a training technique. Like you go to the gym and you do weightlifting. So you have a technique for that, right? Today, legs, tomorrow, chest and biceps, third, like that. Similarly, I have a regime like this. So it's not about weightlifting. I don't do weightlifting at all. Uh, so I work with, let's say today, this yoga asana with this part of chow dance and this kalari prior to martial arts dance. So I only practice those. Every day is different. When I do that, my character begins to get a physical intelligence. Once it has developed an intelligence, then the mind begins to think in a different way for me. So then I start preparing my mind. The mind means research. I identify, I read the whole script many times. I read the background of my character many, many times. In fact, I keep requesting the, the writers and the director to send me as much information as possible, as many links, research, whatever they can, by courier, by post, or uh, online links, whatever they can, I always request them, keep sending it to me. Because I like to process information. So I try to gather information in my mind, everything and anything about the script, about my character, about everything. After having done that, it starts to create a mental intelligence for me. Mm. So the, I start to think like that now, slowly entering my character. These are the ways I enter my character. And then before every scene that I, that I go for uh, in a film or theater, whatever, especially in films and OTT, in my room, in my hotel room or in my van, wherever I am, I have everything put on the bed or on a huge table. All notes are over there. So just before the shot or just before going for the day on location, I keep doing my researches over there because all of these are my notes. And my script has got many, many notes. It has even the breath patterns and even what my voice should be. Every character I perform has a very different voice. If you see the voice of Maitre is different from the, play, the way I play Gandhi for Mr. Sham Benegu is different for, from Parulkar's voice, that is different from Sanjeev Mehra's voice, and that is different from Avrod, the character I play over here. All the voices, the patterns are different. They are not totally starkly different, but there is a difference in the rhythm, in the weight of these voices. They all pertain to the physical intelligence of the character. So they can't sound the same. That's how you create a character. That's where you transform yourself. I believe in the methodology of transformation. I don't believe in being like the character. I believe in becoming the character. I feel that is my methodology. I have to become. Next question is from Meenal. And she says, Hello. So, my question is, 
कि मूवीज देर आर अ लॉर्ड ऑफ फैक्टर्स विच हेल्प एन एक्टर बी द सिनेमेटोग्राफर डायरेक्टर एडिटिंग मल्टीपल ट्रायल्स अ लॉर्ड ऑफ थिंग्स विच ऑब्वियसली डज नॉट हैपन इन थिएटर सो हाउ कैन वी एज एक्टर्स प्रिपेयर आर सेल्स फॉर द फील्ड ऑफ थिएटर थैंक यू दस द ब्यूटी अबाउट द थिएटर इट इज सेड दैट इन द थिएटर यू ओनली नीड a human being that's called the actor and you need one audience across the stage that's it <laughs> and that is theater you don't need anything you don't need lights you don't need costume you don't need um when i say you don't need costume the actor can wear just the minimal things and just stand in front of the audience mm-hmm. he doesn't have to be dressed in a costume he doesn't have to have lights everywhere no art direction uh no music nothing nothing that is why the preparation of the actor in the theater is so crucial and essential this you will not get in films that is why your foundation and the end of the journey of the actor is always theater in between you do films yeah. always this is the journey of the actor yeah. Yeah. so when you are preparing for the theater and the stage you and the director are the only people in fact once the show starts even the director is not there anymore there is no cut so the director also steps back it's only you the actor because you can't interrupt a st- stage performance how do you prepare your preparation therefore works on rehearsals in the films you don't have rehearsal process there are people who do that but those rehearsals are very short it's just about a week or 10 days something like that and then that's it and there's a workshop and then we go and shoot but in theater you cannot do that theater requires months of rehearsals mm. two months three months four months six months eight months of rehearsals one year of rehearsals sometimes in the rehearsal process is where the director and the actor get together and they begin to understand not just the writings they begin to understand the silences the pauses the scenes the comma the full stop everything in that script as you perform not sitting on a table but by doing the rehearsals that is why you are called the actor a c t which means to do not to sit on the table and discuss acting rehearsal does not mean sitting and discussing the only time you sit as an actor is when you are doing this reading that's all you don't sit and discuss a play that's not the job of the actor that's my take on theater that's my so you are supreme you are carrying the script on you you are carrying the character on your shoulder your preparations have to be very vast which yes. is why your training is important training is not just physical preparation training is acting craft acting techniques you must train in how do i build a character how do i do a scene how do i interpret a script how do i shift from one scene to the other these are all techniques of acting how do i create emotions how do i create the navarasas inside my body what how do i interpret through my eyes what is breath training how do i use breath to create emotion there are acting methodologies that is why you have natya shastra method acting chekovian technique there are so many all these techniques teach you methods tools to create the craft as an actor and you have to learn all this gym and going to the gym is not the work of an actor i repeat this going to the gym is not the work of an actor gym you go if you want to look good in your body it will never help you in acting not even an iota in fact it will have a reverse effect if you go and pump up meat inside your body and iron you have veins in the body you know veins they are very close to each other in between the veins that gap is called meridian your emotions happen in your cortex in your brain in the limbic cortex all your emotions flow from here into your spine and from the spine they go into your meridians throughout the body if you are doing lot of weight training and pumping up all meat then you are jamming your meridian your emotions will not flow through it has a reverse effect if you do lot of weight training so please be careful and gym training is not acting body training actors body training is martial arts which is traditional and india 
it is only culinary poetry. I won't even recommend Taekwondo, Kung Fu. No, not for actors. Only culinary poetry. Mm -hmm. And Chow dance, which is a mass dance form. And mm -hmm. Kathakali, which is a great form of mime and gestures and eye movements. Yeah, yeah. These are the forms you must train in. Yeah. That's yeah. where the intelligence will be good. Yeah. Gym is only for good looks. If you really want to you know, look nice and that's where you go to the gym. Gym is not for actors. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're absolutely right by saying this, that a lot of these other activities are very peripheral in nature. They may contribute yeah. to your looks, they may contribute to your appearance or, you know, maybe to some extent to stamina, but your acting, emotions, expressions, portrayal will only be aided if you do similar uh, activities, which are on the same spectrum, like a chow dance or maybe like a kalari point too, because somewhere they are yeah. Invoking the emotions from you. Kathakali is only with eyes, they express everything. And just through the mudras. Just the mudras and the eyes, they will express everything. That's a huge acting training. How do I work my, on my face and express only with my eyes? And just my fingers. Of course, we don't stylize all this when we are working in the theater or in films. We don't start doing Kathakali and Chow, but these training practices will help you to sensitize your eyes, to sensitize your fingers, to sensitize the body, to understand that if I want an emotion on my face, I have to train in chow because I have to bring up all the emotions into my face. If I'm doing Kalari Pai too, there are animal stances over there. And each animal posture is very scientifically designed and they have a feeling to it, an emotion to it. In yoga asanas, you have again animal postures. You have the bhujang asana, which is the cobra pose, the snake. You have the majar asana, which is the cat posture. Like that, you have so many. Which is why the actor trains in all these, because there are feelings involved. Mm -hmm. I think you have quite an interesting regimen. I am um, quite amused to know you are actually trying a variety of things yeah. to keep yourself not just fit, mentally alert, uh, prepared and uh, very empathetic to the audience because you know you you may or may not be working on a project but you are never away from your craft you're always in a striking range <laughs> okay i will move to the last question uh, last audience question and this question is from lakshmi Namaste Niraji, this is Lakshmi. My question is this, for actors, especially struggling ones, how important is it to be proficient and experienced in other departments like set design, editing, writing, screenplay and assistant direction? How important is it? So, uh, thank you Lakshmi, it's a nice question. It is, it has been my journey as well, that when I started, I never started as an actor. Uh, it took me a very, very long time to really get a break uh, in the theater and in films. Many, many, many years went by. Uh, even when I got a break in 1997, after about, I think, seven years of um, auditioning and, you know, figuring out where I should work and everything. After seven years, I got my first ever film, which was an Odia feature film. I think I was 29 years or 28 years of age. I did my first film. And after that, after seven years, I felt, wow, I've made it. Time has come. And then after that film, nothing happened. For 14 long years, nothing happened. No work. I went on auditioning. I went on doing everything. Nobody called me for 14 long years. So in effect, 21 years went away. And then I started to do my work. So time goes away. What did I do in that time? I did a lot of things, which I cannot talk about right now, because these are my strengths. My struggle years are my strength. I cannot talk about them and discuss them in public. Certain things I've spoken in certain interviews, but they were very, very small things. And I said that with a different intention. The intention was to say that I've done many, many things so that I could get the experience of life. And I did work in all the departments as well. Not editing and not cinematography, but otherwise almost every department. Because that time I was assisting and trying to make a living, that's all. So people just threw me into whichever department because they were not serious about it. So mm -hmm. wherever they gave me work, I went and worked over there. Whether it was production, whether it was just assisting in production or just doing what literally what a spot boy does, 
I did that also. Everything and anything that was given to me. I sold books. Again, this is not, I'm not talking about my years of struggle. They were done for survival and to experience life. Mm. You have to do everything. There's nothing called jack of all trades. You have to do everything to be the master of something. Artists can be made by only training in his craft all the time. You have to live life because all art is about life. It is not about the technique that you're using. This is a very important thing to understand. So just by reading books on acting, going to acting schools in America, Europe, wherever, that's good. But just doing that and coming in straight away saying, I want to act in films now or I want to do theater, that is wrong. You have to live life. You have to participate in life. Do things that you are not. Do things that you don't like. Because that is the test of you being the actor. If you're only going to be doing things which you like and what you are and what makes you happy, then you're still just being yourself. And acting is not about you. It's about another character all the time. How will you empathize with another character if you're not going to mix around in life with people? So stop doing things that only make you happy. Stop doing things that only make you feel comfortable. Come out of those zones. Also enter into the actor zone and make this actor do things he does not like. Make this actor do things he's unhappy with. Make things, make, do, make this actor work. That actor who's inside you. You have to make your actor work. I make my actor work a lot. By nature, I'm a very private and personal person. Very, very private. But the roles I do are also extrovert roles. <laughs> they're very extrovert. They're villains. They're abusive roles. They're everything. I am not at all like that. But I make the actor inside me go to work every day. I just take this guy out and I say, go to work. Go experience life. Go sweat out and come back in the night. Don't come home before that. It's a Zen philosophy. In Zen, they rangoli rangoli, the Buddhist monks. And they make rangoli banate unko kai din lag jate wo rangoli banate wo us waqt wo khana bahut kam khate hain aur puri dhyan ke sath wo kaam karte hain is meditation aur ye sara tamam banane ke baad immediately mita dete hain but he used the tool of non violence that is why he is gandhi is the mahatma i hope i am able to express myself clearly to to you Maybe. Yeah, this is the way you live your life. You don't yeah. just say, I have to go and become violent. No, the tool cannot be violence. Inside is violence. Mm -hmm. To be a villain, if I have to express villain outside, in Byomkesh Bakshiora's Parulkar, inside, I have to understand peace. Inside, I have to understand sympathy. I cannot be violent inside and violent outside. Then I will spoil my performance. So all these philosophies are there. There are so many things you have to understand as an actor. And not yeah. just jump into this. Okay, I'm an actor. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I think uh, acting, like, like you rightly said, cannot be dealt in isolation. Life has to go on. Life's learnings have to go on. Uh, our yes. approach, outlook. So everything has to come in congregation, a perfect harmony or synergy. I truly believe a lot of people sometimes uh, are become so egoistic, self-centered towards their art, they become bad human beings. They start misbehaving with people or they are egoistic. I really wish that is never done. I mean, we are also artists. I mean, a little so thank you, sir. important Thank you so much. Thank you, Gaurav. All good wishes to you and your team. Ji. Ji, we wish you We will continue to be mesmerized by your performance. Our best wishes, sincere regards to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, brother.